NBC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Hockey League. Here in Boston, they honor tradition with tradition. The anthem vocalist, his 39th year. The organist, 13th. The PA announcer's 21st, Jim Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the singing of our national anthem performed this evening by a garden legend. Accompanied by Bruins organist Ron Polster, please welcome Renee Rancourt. of the salute and this time two full fist bumps. The Honda starting goalies. Steve Mason won the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year five seasons ago. Since then he has won a hundred games. He is only 26. Tuka Rask won the Vezina Trophy for best goalie four months ago. Before then he won 102 games. He's only 27. The NHL's 98th season. And this, the oldest U.S. franchise, Boston, and one of the proudest in Philadelphia. And what fury they have had in prior seasons and matchups. Dougie Hamilton does the honors. Marshan is hit first by Braden Coburn. Marshan back to his feet. Wedged off there and given a shove by Claude Giroux. Played back on by Braden Shen and lobbed back out again for Hamilton. Braden Shen tried to poke it away. Hamilton filtered it through. Magically, it comes near Marshan, who taps it on and took the hit. And now Bergeron ladles it in deep and then is checked off again. Giroux connects with Braden Shen. Flew one ahead, hoping for Boracek, and it just squipped crazily and slowed down. And all of this brings an offside. Greg Berube was named October 7th of last year as coach. One year ago tonight, he authored his very first coaching victory in the NHL over Florida. And Claude Julien has been with these Bruins for eight seasons. Prior to that, lots of experience too. And a Stanley Cup championship three years ago. Played along near Wayne Simmons. Brought on by Couturier and Sean Couturier threw it right back in and Rask out to scoop it along with a big goal stick and back along it came where McQuaid had a collision. Two flyers collided. It's rattled on around and Strike will see this go down for an icing. Sean Couturier with a big hit on Adam McQuaid as Tuka Rask went in behind the net to play that puck and early and often here in game one in period one. Well, he took a hit to make a play, just kept advancing that puck after Rass. The goaltender went in behind the net to move the puck up those right wing boards. And paid a price. 
Welcome back after only playing 30 regular season games last year for the Bruins, that being Adam McQuaid. And they really missed him in the playoffs, I thought, Eddie, without Seinberg and McQuaid, it made a big difference. That nice. size factor for sure. Yeah. Very good win by Couturier, and that one chopped along. You will notice if you're geometrically inclined that there is a greater distance between the hash marks for these face-offs this year. It was tried in the preseason, and they decided they'd like it. We'll get back into the whys of all of this as we get more face-offs, and we will get some of those. A turnaround shot by Seidler found its way all the way through for Mason to make the stop one. Good screen in front of that by Chris Kelly standing right in front of Mason as he fought that one off. Lost by Grossman and handled by Mason. Talking about Adam McQuaid only playing 30 games last season. Well, Dennis Seidenberg only played 34, and there's that quick release from the blue line, and good screen in front of that by Kelly. Eddie, the one thing I'm noticing early on here, you talk about Seidenberg keeping that play alive. The Bruins aren't giving up the blue line like they have in years past. It looks like they're almost trying to be more aggressive on the offensive blue line, holding the line. Defenseman, if you're going to have that mindset and that thought process, you better have some help because you're going to give up odd man situations well that trust factor becomes such an important part of being an aggressive team and especially defensive pairs in the offensive zone michael delzano was hit there the one-time ranger this is blown back out again by michael roth played back again and roffle scoops it up and brings it on and that one is spike free and started back out by ryan spooner spooner brought it on got it over for a shot and that one ricocheted wide it was Matt Frazier trying that. Poked onto the back to Krug, and Krug slings one that's blocked away by Mason. Protected well, and a nice swagger by Delzato, and he's able to advance it up to Roffel now. Roffel fires, and that one was well wide. One-time shot is turned aside there by Tuka Rask. First shift for Delmar on the ice for the Flyers, young man out of France. This one is thrown back down and will become an icing. Not a lot of guys out of France have wound up playing at the major league level in North America, but here is one. And Craig Berube says he's very fast and he's really intelligent here. Uh, he spent the last few years playing in Sweden where he was a tremendous player playing for Sheleftio. They won the Swedish championship last year at 20 goals playing for them. And a nice save made by Mason at the front door was Bobby Robbins, 64 in the black uniform, his first NHL shift occurs about two and a half minutes into game one for him. Game 500 if you add up all the games he has played in North America and Europe. He's waited a long time for this. He's going to get an NHL per diem member well, tonight too as Boston goes to Detroit to play. They have the Red Wings there at Joe Lewis Arena tomorrow. This is played back out again and a very good thump applied to him and then he flips down Ronaldo. And coming over was McQuaid. The two Bruins did get the number of Orange 36. Well, you better have your head up, and Zach Ronaldo comes over and welcomes Bobby Robbins into the National Hockey League, and as Pierre made mention, Adam McQuaid comes over and does what you're supposed to do when a first game player comes in and takes a big hit, and there's that face-off chance. Good opportunity for the Bruins. They've had a couple, but Steve Mason has been real sharp in this first period, a couple of tough saves off of redirects with traffic in front. Mason's done such a good job since coming over to Philadelphia, and I think a big reason why Jeff Reese, the goalie coach, said he's done a great job with him. Along this comes now to Bergeron, fed to the back to Chara. The veteran, six-time Norris Trophy finalist for best defenseman, and he has won it as well. 37 years of age and not slowing down a bit. Angled on ahead now for a pass that is flagged and thrown out by Dougie Hamilton. Grossman turning with it there. They try to pitch it back in, but in the way was Hamilton. Then brushed back in by Riley Smith. Loaded on and grabbed off there by Hamilton. Nice handoff over to Smith. Smith then went in front and shanked wide by Bergeron. Taken by Marchand, given to Chara. Chara lifted one into the catching glove of Mason. Well, Eddie and I have been talking about the Bruins being aggressive, but especially on the offensive blue line. Look at Dougie Hamilton. He's not backing out there. He keeps that play alive, wants to jump in, force feed the slot. Good opportunity for Patrice Bergeron. Chara stayed in later on, kept the play alive again. That's why we have a faceoff 
to the right of Steve Mason, but a different identity for the Bruins early on here, Eddie. And if you're the Flyers, then you got to make sure that you're using the glass, get it out, force them to you know, eat it, so to speak, in order to keep the play alive. No soft plays because, to Pierre's point in that replay, is that they have the confidence right now to stay in there and keep those plays alive for the forwards in the offensive zone. So the blue lines become really important. They're always important. You got to get the puck in and you got to get it out at those blue lines. Banked around for Seidenberg and then tipped right back to him again. What a relief it is for the Bruins to have a healthy 44 and 54 on defense because they missed them. This one is tipped back by Matt Reed out of Bemidji State, gathered in by Luke Chen. Four and a half played in game one. Four shots, three by the Boston Bruins. That defensive pair is really important for the Flyers. Doc, you mentioned Luke Chen playing with Michael Delzato, free agent signing by Ron Hextall, the new general manager taking over for Paul Holmgren. Be a real important defensive pairing moving forward. This one nudged back out near Matt Frazier. They try to work in, and Spooner was bumped into by Roppel. Carried right back ahead by R.J. Umberger and handed on across. Vinny LeCavalier with the back hitter. Oh, scrambling for it. They pluck away at it. Still they fire for it. And it came on back for Coburn. Shot that is blocked down. A net mouse scrambling. It looked like it was going behind. Took a rasp and then could be mashed in, but it did not happen. Angled on, off of McDonald, knifed right back to him. Some trouble there, but he filtered it through and trying to work on his Le Cavalier, and then he's able to flop one to the corner. Atkinson turning with it there. He's able to wheel behind and send a pass out that is flagged by Spooner, handed across to Seidenberg, rifled off the short glass, all the way back and stepping to a play! looking behind but the iron was his friend on it and it is strike pivoting and play Grossman can advance it off banged ahead and lob back in again Seidenberg bear hug there and waltz the long pitch back up by Robin guided on back by Ronaldo away from Belmar lifted back into traffic off of Akis Hands on to the back and a shot by Delzado was carefully grabbed and held by Raz. Six and a quarter gone in the first. Like it so far? No score. Welcome back to opening night in Boston. Dennis Seidenberg, eye off the glass, creates a foot race situation for Danny Pai. He goes around Grossman and rifles this one right off the post and the crossbar, Eddie. And back at the other end a little bit earlier, Vinny LeCavie does a great job of getting that puck to net on his backhand. Look at Kevin Miller helping out his goaltender, Tuka Rask, with R.J. Umberger right in front of the net. You never know, Doc, it's never a bad play to get that puck to the net. Indeed. Oh, out of this scramble, a collision there, and down went Bergeron, but fielding it and throwing it on now is Chara, and it goes back down. And will it be an icing? No, it's waved off. Good hustle by Riley Smith. Played along close quarters to Bergeron. Got a little opening there and passed it behind. Pinching is Chara, and Chara stood up a bit there by Voracek, but only as much as a 6-9 man can be. Along the boards, it's kicked further by Chara, and then fought further by Voracek and spun on to Mason, who has stopped play. Watch the NHL on NBC Live on your laptop, tablet, or smartphone with NBC Sports Live Extra. Download the app or go to NBC Sports Live Live Extra and watch the biggest events anywhere, anytime. Maybe this is a point, Eddie, where we can talk about the distance that we have at the face-off circles that's greater this year at the hash marks and the advantage. Yeah, they've added almost uh, two feet away from both players. I think what they want to do is cause some more opportunity for the offensive team if they do win the face-off to not be impeded on getting to the net and more time for the offensive team to make plays. And then from defensively is that you have a little bit more time from those players that are along the boards or in the middle of the ice. And it's a lot easier, too, to be able to get out and, and get out to your coverage and not being impeded. So less uh, congestion, so to speak, with players standing next to each other going from uh, three feet to uh, five plus. Kelly goes back for this one, and Kelly got there. Delzato did too, and they cancel. A good wall job done there by Simmons, and so it can be played by Luke Shen, played on to Paturier. Why did you say that Shen and Delzato are such an important pair? Well, I, I think be, because of the aspect of needing 
and the trust factor of of the pairs in certain situations, Doc. I mean, a guy like Michael Delzato, a guy that can skate, a guy that can create some offensive opportunity, and I think for Luke Shen, uh, a guy that needs to read the plays a little bit better, a big body, not really overly quick. So still a work in progress with both of those players, I believe, and you got to make sure if you're Craig Berube and his staff is that you're picking your spots on when those guys happen to be on the ice. Sometimes it's okay to go out there and just kill minutes. Eat up minutes for the guys who are getting ready to come back out there in your top four. Flyers had to kill more shorthanded minutes last year than any other team in the league. And this is Simmons taking over there and throwing one that ricocheted in front. Spooner can play it ahead for the Bruins. Got it on now for the play back in again by Dougie Hamilton. Forced back on by Mason. Scaled right back up for the turn and take by Umberger. Pennsylvania native threw it back out for Chara to hand back over to Hamilton. On the turning stick of Milan Lucic and back across and then on for Char again. Razor bumped after he played that one back in. Do we have a little bit of a defensive scheme employed by the Flyers here? The Bruins seem to try to counter it by going back. This thrown on a cross now for Roffel. Roffel is checked off. Follow up is nudged ahead. Good try there by Umberger on that three on two. It's been a good start for this line of Umberger, LeCavier, and Roffel. Doc, I think the Philadelphia is trying to take a little bit of the tempo out of Boston's game right now. That's why you see him backing off a little bit. Then on a cross, Robbins was nearby. Trying to play it in front was Craig Cunningham, and no luck there. And so around it comes now for the hold and the play on back by Boracek, who has walled for his trouble by Robbins. Outlet it ahead and put it right back, and it is ruled and offside on the play by Marsham. Let's take a look at the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. Claude Giroux was not proud of his start, not only his, but his team's, and you saw the record at the first 15. They only had four wins. He turned it on in the last stretch, though, 38 wins. They were a strong team down the stretch, arriving with some momentum going into the playoffs, and that only shut down by Steve Mason, who was hurt the first three games against the Rangers. And then the Rangers being a team of destiny to the finals last year, eliminating the Flyers 2-1 to one in the narrowest of margins in a seventh game at Madison Square Garden. Got on now by Louis Erickson and handed on across. Soderbergh turns, tried to play it in front, and it scaled on across and can be twisted on back and held by Ronaldo. Braden Coburn with the long pass, and Ronaldo able to motor ahead, threw it back in, and got out of the way of the hit coming from Kevin Miller. Jostles now with Tory Cruz. Krug and Riley Smith, the last of the two signings for the Bruins as they solidified, but then it was right in that same wake that Johnny Boychuk was sent away, and we get a penalty that will be coming up. That penalty behind the play by Zach Ronaldo. He got into it with Tory Krug, who gave him a little bit of a rough ride to the right of Tuka Rask, and as they were skating up the ice, Ronaldo got his glove up in the face of Krug. Who got to stick up a little bit. Ronaldo didn't like it. You can't blame him. And then right there, the punch, the quick little head throw, and power play coming. And that's where Zach Ronaldo knows he can't be doing that. And Craig Berube will address him about that. This Boston Bruins power play last year was third in the league. Only Pittsburgh and Washington were better. And one of the things I know they're excited about, Maury Krug on the back end reported an unbelievable shake to the Bruins. Third in goals for, third on the power play. The special teams have been strong, top five in almost all as a shot from Krug was tipped wide, played on now by Hamilton. Oh, and slung into traffic. Couturier got in the way and now is able to take the return from Matt Reed. Couturier able to step back in and shoot one. Oh, and a high shot off of Rast. Curled along by Reed and his shot was blocked up into the mesh. And so heady work by 14 and 24 for Philadelphia. Tuka Rass really fought off that shot from Sean Couturier. Not a good play there from Dougie Hamilton. Easy play for Couturier and able to buy some time. Goes inside, outside, and from a nasty angle with Rass down a little bit early. Goes high and hard. The board power play resumes for the Bruins here as it's carried ahead by Hamilton, handed across, and Smith is able to play back in. 
That one hit a glass support and eluded Mason, played back to Hamilton and handed on to Erickson, and they play some catch with it. Louis Erickson dealing it in deep. Four forwards for the Bruins on this power play. Oh, and a strong shot by Bergeron is answered by Mason. Another shot deflected to the corner. Soderberg fed. Bergeron tries to play it free and does. Chops it back on Soderberg. Protects. Tried to jam to the front. retrieval for the Boston Bruins was the key to this. Winning those battles. Beer talked about having four forwards out there. Soderberg gets it, and here comes Riley Smith. Back door. Lots of opportunity there. And he's the fourth forward playing on the back end, and what a creative play from Carl Soderberg to Riley Smith. Eddie, you talk about retrieval. That's retrieval personified, but the Bruins have been hard on the puck ever since this game has started. Braden Chen can't clear. The bad penalty in behind. Oh, he's, he's going to hear about that. Ronaldo will definitely hear about that. Miller checked off. Played along further and thrown into traffic by Giroux. Carried out by Marchand, and he gains the zone with a pass on over to Bergeron. Tried to sling one in front in the way Delzato. Another try had to be fought off by Mason. Luke Chen plays it along. Voracek laid it back, carried on by Michael Delzato. Fed back to Voracek, lost it to Seidenberg, and Seidenberg turns. Adam McQuaid's pass, and then he was mashed. Came on to Frazier for the tap, and it is spiked on back. And an onside play as Voracek brings it further. Backhanded one that's off a leg. And spirited right back again by Spooner and on now for Lucic. And then ahead to Spooner and we get a stoppage of play. And an offside. 8-12 to go. First period only. The score. The Bruins here in the first. During the break, Pierre spoke to Bruins head coach Claude Julien. I know it's early, Coach, but what do you like about your group so far? I think we've come out with a lot of energy here, Pierre, and uh, it's nice to see our guys are proactive right now. These are pinching, guys are backing them off, so uh, right now I think we're playing with a lot of confidence. I know Jeff Ward's moved on. He used to work with the power play here. Four forwards on the power play. Is that a scheme we can expect from your group? Well, yeah, I mean, we had some of that last year. Same thing in, again this year. I think we got some great uh, playmakers that can play to point, and then uh, Riley Schmidt was proof of that. Thanks for, Coach. Thanks for doing this, Coach. Thank you. Jeff Ward has gone to Germany to be a coach there. This is brought ahead and then lobbed up the wing off the short glass, and it comes right to Simmons, who gains and flings one that's off Kelly. Bounces near Seidenberg, and Seidenberg's stale made it there. Seidenberg able to pull away. Played on from Soderberg, on now for the turning Louis Erickson. Dallas Star handed back to McQuaid, quickly from Seidenberg, back up now for Louis Erickson. Had trouble with the handle, Couturier did not. Fed back over now for Simmons, nice swagger! And a shot that went wide, and is trapped and held by Rask. Now the Bruins were in control of that puck, and then they turned it over. And one of the greater opportunists in this league is Wayne Simmons. <laughs> what skill, sick hands. Unbelievable opportunity, Eddie, for hey, Wayne Simmons. You go back to that power play goal, Pierre. Low coverage by the Flyers. Here comes Riley Smith. Beautiful puck retrieval, strength in numbers, and there's no chance for Steve Mason as Riley Smith comes in that back door. And Pierre asks Claude Julian about having the four forwards. Well, the power play unit before that had three defensemen on the power play unit with Chara, the Dano Chara standing in front of the net. So equaling it out, making everybody happy, having four forwards on one unit and three B on the other. Well, the man that replaced Jeff Ward is Joe Sackler, the former head coach of the Colorado Avalanche, and a BU great. That one shanked to the corner and digging it out as Pae slugged it back up now for Umberger, who jammed it wide, and right there, LeCavalier fed one in front, but it went off Tory Krug of Boston. At the half forge, Roppel had it taken away and worked on back further by Bobby Robbins. Robbins from Wisconsin, near Rhinelander, in the upper part of Wisconsin. Inside the glass, here is Pierre. Well, Doc and Eddie, you heard Close Julian talk about the aggressive play, especially from the Bruins defenseman. Here's an example of what they're trying to do. Keep pucks alive. Don't give up the offensive blue line like Seidenberg does there. Here's Dougie Hamilton making a good read and react. 
Bergeron gets a great chance, and there's Chara pitching up. And who was backing him up? Brad Marchand. So they're all buying in, and Eddie talked about it. If you're going to have defense pinching, the forwards better help out. So far, the Bruins forwards are doing a good job insulating the defense. Krug will play this one around behind. Bang back up the boards and a feed just away from Giroux. Fed back out by Paye and will be chased down by Luke Shen. Is it an icing? No. Just waved off at the last moment. Can be played back on now by the Flyers offensively. But tipped right up into harm's way and Robbins filters it behind and comes to the bench for a change. Chen couldn't check his man. It's flung back to the slot and Smith a shot that pinballed off Voracek for Chara's shot that went off Giroux. Fed back on now for Smith who cannot get to the front. So a three on two developing for the Flyers. Now catching up two Bruins. And it's fed on back now to Del Zotto. Pivots, looks, deals it back to the safety of center as he was hoping for strike to have arrived in the past was Aaron. And isn't that one of the things that Del Zotto can do though, jump into the rush like that? One of his strengths there, but I thought he had a chance to take that puck right to the net. Had, his, had the puck on his forehand on that offside. Looked like there was lots of room and bypassed the great scoring chance. What a drop pass by Belmar and a shot by Grossman that is shut off by Rack. What speed by Belmar, Eddie, to create that chance. Tremendous speed. It's not always you see that kind of speed on a fourth liner. Uh, very seldom. I mean, not only that, it's a skill that you talked about. Talked across diagonal pass. You see him working on Dougie Hamilton. Just that separation right there with his speed, and then the back diagonal pass into Nicholas Grossman. It is Chara in the last five and a half of the first period. Milan Lucic brings it ahead. That pass is Aaron. Belmar shepherds it on, and it's thrown by Ronaldo into the catching glove of Raz. So nearly one period play. Short by 524, and the home team lead. Here's that ability of Michael Delzato jumping into the play. Thought he had a chance to keep this puck on his forehand. Shoot it right there. Get it to the net right away. But he stops, pulls up, and makes an errant pass. But that's the type of play that the Flyers want from Michael Delzato. Strike with one shot. Ricochet. Subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL to learn more. And both teams make line changes. But well, you starting to push back a little bit here. You're starting to see them get a little bit more energy after the first power play goal by Riley Smith. To the half board, Delzato sees Umberger take it, but fire one off of Miller. Banked around behind and Krug tries the other way, but it's to Luke Shen for a shot that's chopped wide. Krug turning again, and it's Kevin Miller to play it. Then Delzato. The 184th game since 1967 between these two teams. Rask paddles it along. Included in those, one at Fenway Park. Angled back down, one by the Bruins in overtime. And another on Christmas Day, 1971 in Boston. The last play. Play. Is Francis, who does a lot with Kevin Shattenkirk, Max Pacioretty, James Van Riemsdyk. It's a murderer's role of players that train in Darien, Connecticut. Onside play, tipped by Smith, hoping for Marshan, but instead it's the guys in orange and black and weaving it on ahead now is their captain, Claude Giroux. Giroux slung one that ricocheted behind. Braden Shen played it off the cage, tried to recover and play further, but no luck. Dougie Hamilton outlets, back checked away by Giroux, taken on by Shen, fed back to Giroux off his skate, guided back onto the safety of center by Chara. In this matchup. From the start of the game, the Giroux line against the Bergeron line, and then you have Chara and Hamilton on the ice when the big line for the Flyers is out there. And that's what Paul Drew is going to have to fight through that, Eddie, because you know that Paul Julian is going to do it the entire game. See if Craig Berube tries to get those guys out there that one time when he ends up making the difference to get back in this game. Hamilton gave it across. Cunningham turning with it there. Pie a shot. It's clutched and held against that Flyer logo in the glove of Steve Mann.
Let's take a look at San Jose and Los Angeles. And so ahead with this now come the players and Wayne Simmons. Tries to jam it ahead, no luck. Ricochet back to Del Zotto. Good stick there from Kelly defensively right through the middle of the ice. How many times you said that over the course of his career? Hundreds. Yep. Brought right back again and thrown by McQuaid into the glove of Mason and he will wait. Well, it's not only positioning, but it becomes about habits. Here comes Chris Kelly. Look where his stick is. It's out on the ice, leading with this stick, forcing. I mean, Simmons doesn't, not only has to worry about the back pressure coming from Carl Soderberg, but all of a sudden, here comes Chris Kelly, recognizing when a player's in a real tough spot. But if this stick's up in the air, maybe Simmons gets that puck by him. That's why he's able to play as long as he has in a lot of different roles. Those are little things that add up to winning hockey games, especially at the most important time of year. From this tie-up, it's skipped to the corner and can be played back on. And offside is called. There has been some talk about whether the Flyers are tough enough. Uh, this is Philadelphia we're talking about, and you know that reputations aren't forever. But one of the guys they've talked about is answering the toughness call is Wayne Simmons. That said, don't know how much you want him fighting when he can score and play the way he does. Yeah, you, you want him on the ice but I mean he's the type of guy that I think understands when there is a time to go ahead and, and get dirty like that but I think the Flyers are I think they're more than tough enough and it's just not about the dropping of the gloves it's team tough it's protecting the puck it's getting to those tough areas it's certainly changed I think that definition is definition excuse me has certainly changed over the course of the last couple of years of of tough and team tough. To a side out of this battle and it's lugged to the back. Chara faked the drive, shot one into the catching glove of Mason. Flyers led the league in penalty minutes last year. Unlike 40 years ago, it was not on the strength of fighting majors that they led the league and had so many penalties to kill. They killed the most. Braden Coburn played the most shorthanded of anyone. And I agree with you, there's no, there's no lack of team toughness on this Philadelphia team. However, in the 1974-75 season, Dave Schultz led the second place guy in penalty minutes by 179. He had over 400 minutes and the second place guy was Moose Dupont, his teammate. <laughs> it was a different time. There's penalties, and there's good ones and bad ones and needed ones. And, and look at the score, it's one nothing. It was because of a bad penalty by Zach Ronaldo. Those are the ones that you have to eliminate. Let back across, and here is Reed. And then there's Rath. Centering pass on a giveaway, and that one is thrown on back now and can be rifled back deeper as we are nearing and now under the last 100 seconds of the period. Another miscommunication there with Tuka Rask, one of his defensive. That time it was Dennis Seidenberg. It is controlled by Giroux. Looks ahead for Reed. Brings it on and rifles it to the corner and it bounces on. Fouled there by Kelly. Played back across. Sedano Chara, one of 11 Bruins who won that championship three years ago to Soderberg. And Soderberg around behind. Puts on the brakes through one that is ricocheting away from Erickson. Hamilton banks one off, hoping for Erickson, and he got it in the last minute of play of the period. Chased down and walled by Del Zotto. Yeah. And Shen is able to spin one ahead that's knifed away from Giroux and turned back over a long shift for these guys. Mason knows it, made the block, wanted to cover, could not. And it's lobbed on out to center and a two-on-one. Shoved back up the wing, Braden Shen is in. Save made by Rask and he covered. Well, Pierre touched on it earlier. The Boston Bruins defenseman hanging around at the blue line. This time it's Dougie Hamilton. The Bruins get burned by it, but that's why Tuka Rask Gets the big bucks in goal. 
Bailout a mistake, and it's Braden Shen with an opportunity and a good stop from Tuka Rask. And Eddie, let's talk about defensive awareness. Look at Patrice Bergeron. He's highlighted by the offensive blue line of the Flyers. He's going to come back. There's that miscommunication with Seidenberg and Rask. Who's back? The best defensive forward in the National Hockey League, Patrice Bergeron, goes exactly where he's supposed to go to. 34.1 to go with this face-off involving Le Cavalier. Up for grabs, but taken out by the Bruins and carried right back on by Riley Smith. Wants to force his way through. Blood one along that's taken by Coburn. Flipped on off of Umberger, dragged on by Roffel, but then swung back. And here's Lucic again. Lucic able to burrow around behind in the last 15. Tried for Miller. Back near Lucic, spotted at by Le Cavalier. Centering pass will not work for Smith. Sent to the back to Miller. Five seconds left. Across the crew. Drive! Getting a piece of that with his stick and directing it out of play was Mason. And then he was bumped. Not only the positioning by the Bruins' defensive tandems, but their ability to be able to move the puck quickly. And Louis Krug didn't get a lot on that shot, but Andrew McDonald did a good job there of tying up the Bruins from getting to the front of the net. But moving that puck side to side quickly to get out of that shooting lane. Boys, Luke Chen, Dougie Hamilton, and the linesman and teammates. And seeming peace. Uh, here you go. Dougie Hamilton steps in, Luke Shen gets physical, Hamilton doesn't like that. Trained with his dad, who was an Olympic rower all summer on upper body strength. And you can see going against a strong guy like Luke Shen, Dougie Hamilton handled himself really well. one nothing Boston after one. Coming up on the Lexus Intermission Report, Liam, Mike, Keith, and NHL insider Bob McKenzie debate the boy Chuck trade and the Sharks' lack of a captain. John Forslund will be broadcasting tomorrow night. John, we know you just got out of a stuck <laughs> elevator, so here's the scoring. Smith from Soderbergh and Bergeron at 10.39. You can put it in in pen. Welcome back. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. Number four, Bobby Orr, the statue outside. A much larger number, Doug Jarvis, 964 consecutive games in a streak that began on this date in 1975 and lasted for 12 years. You would have to be foolish to argue that somebody's going to eclipse that record. He also had four Stanley Cup championships. I think there are two records that are pretty safe. Glenn Hall and his talking about Jarvis that would be consecutive games played by a goalie yes sir led ahead now for Bergeron to angle and it's swatted by Coburn and has to be retrieved at center any repairs to Philadelphia after the first period Eddie well, I think Pierre touched on it in that first period is that up since that goal by Riley Smith he's kind of seemed to get their get their game going a little bit generate a little bit more but they need more zone time offensively Little tap pass and a two-on-one developing Braden Shen. He's got Voracek position, but catching up to it, to no one's surprise, was Patrice Bergeron. Turnaround shot ricocheted off Chara from Giroux. Centering pass went off Giroux again. Flagged down, but then taken away by Hamilton as Voracek had it for just a split second. Hamilton with it again. Floated one off the referee, and it had to be shuttled aside by Rask. So now Chara couldn't play it ahead. Thrown back in by Reed, settled down by Rask, taken by Hamilton, played to Chara, and the Flyers' floor check is all over them. It's a long shift for these guys. Out in front, a backhander went wide. Grossman a shot blocked down and then knifed ahead, and Marshan can shuffle it off the boards and get it back to center. But it's the period of the long change, and only Bergeron is able to come off right now. Finally, it is Smith leaving as well. On comes Matt Reed. Threw one in front and arriving in time was Soderberg. Soderberg whacked at it. Everyone whacking at it. And along to get it now is Simmons. Laid to the back and a little helter skelter. A shot that is directed wide by Le Cavalier. 
Beg your pardon, Couturier was at the side of the net. Right back ahead now comes Reed, and it's pitched back in, and Louis Erickson is after that one. Along to take it is Hamilton, met there by Couturier, and then it came on free for Reed. So now Luke Shen. Chara is still out there. Hamilton is still out there. And the ushers are standing up to them, too. <laughs> And they can't change because of the icing. But quality opportunity for the Philadelphia Flyers. Sean Couturier just misses the yawning cage. Puck finds a way through, and Rats would need the reaction, but what a chance for Couturier. Time out, Boston. Well, before that great opportunity there for Sean Couturier, talk about Patrice Bergeron of how good he is defensively. Look at the effort coming back. Now stop it right here. Look at that stick. It's out. Taking away the passing lane and denying a opportunity for Braden Shen to get that puck back to Andrew McDonald. Simple thing, little thing, but it's so important to lead with your stick. You get two hands on your stick, you start reaching. Pretty good chance there's a penalty called, but probably even more importantly, that allows the puck to go back to a trailing offensive player and create a quality chance what's so amazing about him he was a second round draft pick of the boston bruins scott bradley did a great job for the bruins drafting him and you know you think about it, he made the team as an 18 year old the game that put him over the top was a game in montreal a preseason game he made the montreal or the boston bruins playing against the montreal canadian as a second round pick it's a pretty good story in one of the deepest drafts ever the 03 entry draft Well, it's nothing but excellence. The Selkie Trophy is for best defensive forward, and he won it last year. Nobody won more face-offs than he did. Always trying to get better, he said a couple of weeks ago, when it comes to face-offs and every other part of his game. And it shows. Trying to march free, but not doing it. Umberger, puck left behind, and thrown out by Cruz. And thrown in by Louis Erickson. This picked up by Erickson. Oh, he was right to speed to be able to pick it up and get it in deep. The Cavalier, not kidding this time, had it cut <laughs> and thrown back by Erickson and lobbed back in on the pass from Krug to Soderberg, and it's Kelly back in. So this time it's the Flyers who aren't getting much time to work and look a little uh, tired back there. Taken over by Soderberg and his shot deflected into the catching glove of Mason, who wisely will wait. Sunday night is football night. We will be in Philadelphia for America's Game of the Week as Eli Manning and the Giants take on LaShawn McCoy and the Eagles on Sunday night football. Bob Costas and Dan Patrick host Football Night in America. Coverage begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. Chip Kelly's got that offense going in Philly. He does. This is a guy that I saw at a Red Sox game last spring. Here's a shot that is deflected up to the glass. A guy who likes all sports, and maybe he's watching the hockey contest tonight. Welcome if you are. Flung right back in deep, and it is Fraser turning with it there. Fraser able to guide it to the back. Soderberg up with it. Soderberg watched by a stickless Boracek, and he forced the offside. What a reaction on the flyer bench after Boracek made that play. Everybody standing, saying, way to go, Jakey. Wasn't known for this when he came out of junior with Halifax. There he is, spot shot, and you see him come out and lose his stick. Body on stick, right, Eddie? Not body on body. He doesn't quit on the play, and he forces that offside. Yeah, the heads-up play there to get the defenseman, Braden Colburn, who had broken his stick. You want your teammate that's closest to your goaltender defending and helping out to have a stick, and Voracek recognized that right away, and sometimes you'll see players run out of way. Sometimes it's going to happen. Sometimes it is a big hit by Ronaldo. And on with it, trying to fight his way through was Umberger. Meanwhile, it is cleared back out and must be... behind the play and this is a retaliation Seidenberg got hit twice by I took on Tori Krug this one's clean hard and clean knocks him down great play by Ronaldo same sequence later on he comes in and gets physical with Seidenberg again 
And there's a slash twice. And they got him. Second penalty of the game. Ronaldo involved in both. Drew sit. one where he had to sit and then drew a different kind where he sits at the Flyers bench. Seidenberg was over at the bench and he says to Dougie Huda, what did I get the penalty for? And he says, slashing. <laughs> he didn't know. He pretended he didn't know, Doc and Eddie. Even in Mannheim, there are oh, actually <laughs> schools fired seconds. on around now for the keep. And good for them. One of our favorite guys, especially to watch with the puck in his skates, because he's a great soccer guy when it comes to maneuvering the puck without a stick. Something to keep an eye on here with the Flyers, Flyers on the power play. Gave up 11 shorthanded goals last year. Third most in the entire National Hockey League, and they gave up three during the preseason as well. It is Strite, the leading point getter in the preseason, and some of that on the power play for them. 32 in the white. Sent across now, but off of Boracek and a chance now. Moving up is Marshan. Has Bergeron. Shoots and a pat stop, and the rebound is fought off. Eddie, you're pressing with that call. Thrown by Giroux. Poked along by Rask to the glass. Taken off by Erickson, moves out, hoping to get an odd man rush, but going back defensively now is Simmons, and led over to Chara. The return is cut by Strike, a long pass ahead for Le Cavalier. And then across it comes now for a try on goal that is stopped. Tuka Rask made the save. One too many passes for Zdeno Chara back at the offensive end. Two offensive chances while shorthanded for the Bruins. But Zdeno Chara comes all the way back at a four-on-two situation. Look at the Flyers shrink the numbers, but that long reach, that's not fair. Chara's about 15 feet in behind. He leads with that long reach. And here's Marsha and off to the races in that two-on-one you talked about earlier, Eddie. Jump back across 45 to go power play and a shot by Couturier he was blocked down and lay at the net mouth before it was clear. Chara getting a rest right now. He played 332 of the first 513 of the period. They had that real long shift. Aaron pass here by the Flyers. That's going to be icing. Faceoff comes all the way back. The beer showed us that replay, that chance with Marshan coming in on that two-on-one and almost looked like he was in between. Looked like he was just thinking about pass, pass, pass all the way over to the other side. I believe that was Bergeron that was over on the other side. and He got in and had to eventually take that shot. Mesa with good position made that save. Mason and Marshawn were teammates. The 07 Super Series between Cannon and Rush and also the World Junior. Goal for Cannon in 07. Paul Giroux was on that team. So was Luke Chen. They were teammates. Mason and Marsha. This is rifled back in by McDonald. Poked along by McQuaid. Jabbed on by Hamilton. Poked again by McQuaid. And Dougie Hamilton rags in front and makes them chase. Two seconds and one. And Seidenberg is out of the box. A single shot on goal while on the power play for the Flyers. Delzato hurried one ahead. Left behind but then poked along further by Belmar. Collided with Tory Krug and Krug reaching in there as it's Ackerson kicking it. Ackerson yet again. Back up the boards, it's swept on to Ronaldo, fidgeted to the back loop. Shen connects back onto Ackerson, then Ronaldo, and that, or check that, then a shot that came from Belmar, and Ronaldo was in front. Ronaldo able to turn and shoot one that's casually blocked there. A little butterfly move by Raz. Shift here for the fourth line of the Flyers. Energy guys are giving them energy right now with speed and tenacity. Soderberg pivots, looks over his options, decides on one that turns out to be Kelly. Rattled on around further and can be booted aside. And then Kelly reaches and is able to come up with it. Had it knifed along, but Erickson there to clean up and shoot into the glove of Mason. 12.59 to go. Second period of play. Game one in Boston. Boston won nothing. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Rivalry presented by Coors Light. From TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Off this face off, it's booted on back and it's Chara to take and throw one in front that's blocked right down at the front of the cage. And can be rolled back out again. Mark Strike got in the way of that one. A wrister is blocked up high and then winds up going out of play.
Flyers' upcoming schedule tomorrow against New Jersey. We mentioned that Boston will be playing tomorrow in Detroit, Montreal on Saturday, and Anaheim on Tuesday at 7 Eastern. Meanwhile, this is floated behind by Char and can be played on by Adam McQuaid. It is Smith. A tip back out again by Strite. And floated on back. Strite drops back defensively now as it's Marshan coming ahead. Turning with it now. Marshan sets it on up. Backhander by Bergeron was wide. Bounces on to Marshan. Helps it back to McQuaid for a shot that is held by Mason through the screen. And the first period, the Boston Bruins had 14 shots on goal. Nine of them came from their defense. There's Adam McQuaid teeing another one up off the relay from Brad Marchand. Clearly, that's something that Bruins have been working on in training camp because they're really trying to utilize their defense in offensive zone cycle situations. And as a forward in the offensive zone, you're so, certainly looking at the low coverage of the Flyers, their wingers being down, so what, what is open? And then eventually, if the team makes that adjustment, well, then you're able to take the puck to the net because the defensemen are being covered. But right now, to Pierre's point, the men are open. Shot and a wonderful save made by Mason on a bang-bang play. Sent right back in as Ryan Spooner goes back for this one along with Miller. It's played back up off of Lucic. Brought ahead by Spooner in a three-on-two. Hustling to get back Roffle. Pass on the wing for a shot. It's deflected wide. The try came from Frazier. Thrown in front and that fun to decide. Played by LeCavalier. And LeCavalier flies a bouncer across. Sent back in by Delzato and around behind into the larger trapezoid it goes to be played further by Umberger and intercepted and blocked aside by Cruz. Umberger with another try this time to the opposite side. Umberger worked on there by Miller. Along comes Roffel, couldn't get by Spooner, and it's played by Cruz. Then back to Frazier and then back down. 11.20 to go second period. The shots are 18-11 Boston, one nothing the Bruins in the game. Odd man rushes in this period. The Bruins with all three as a shot went wide. Trying to deflect with Simmons. Played on a lawn by McDonald. Gotten by Couturier, but walled by Seidenberg. More collisions. Rushing in is Soderberg. Close quarters along with Dougie Hamilton, and it trickled behind to Seidenberg. Seidenberg bounced one ahead. Kept alive by McDonald. Played back off of Reed. Carried back out again by Soderberg. And tapped in deep, and Kelly will get there. Kelly brushed it along, Erickson there, through onto the front that's carefully guided along but errantly off Simmons. A trigger pull and it comes on back now to Krug. Krug with a blast and it was wide of the cage. Simmons turns, flopped one on a cross. Reed will bring it across the red line and make them chase so they can get that change they wanted. Nearing the halfway point of the second period. Michigan-born Tory Krug got it on a cross, laid back out again by Marchand, carried on by Bergeron, puts on the brakes, threw one across. Lailing at that one was Grossman. Meanwhile, it's played by Smith, whipped on to Chara. Chara with a shot, getting a piece of that Mason, and it hopped on around for McQuaid. Beautiful pass there from Smith to Chara. Carried off was Bergeron, Braden Shen, bothered by Smith, and back along it comes further. Giroux couldn't make that play, and so the Flyers are penned in right now. Laid to the back to Chara. Stoked on a cross. Hurried shot by McQuaid in a direction by Smith, and another try. Getting the first was Mason. Meanwhile, right back ahead, it's Giroux handing on to Boracek. Pitched it in and went to get it, but it's McQuaid to get there first. Mashed in two, and turning with it is Chara. The big man lays one ahead that careened on out. <laughs> Almost too many, Doc. There is a leniency there, is there not, Peter? Uh, nobody played the puck, that's why Philadelphia was fortunate. Handed back on for a feed across that was behind Ronaldo. Caught up to it. Oh, it boy. A couple, and here's Robinson. by Lucien. coming back from a major injury and they had a chance to tee up Zach Ronaldo and boy did they ever. Well Zach Ronaldo is going to go in he looks takes a quick little look to see who's coming 
I think he saw where Craig Cunningham was coming from, but I don't know if he realized that Bobby Robbins was going to drill him from behind, and here comes Luke Shen seeing that hit from Robbins. Going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, one throw on right, one throw on left. He expected that after that big hit right in front of the flyer bench. And Eddie, they have good memories, these players. They know what Ronaldo did earlier in the game, going after Crew. He got a penalty on that one and then going after Seinberg. He just got a contract extension, Zach Ronaldo did with the Flyers, and he married it. I think Zach Ronaldo had a really good year for the Flyers last year. He's an important player for them going forward. There was an initial call on the hit, I believe, by Robbins. That, there was the initial penalty coming, and then subsequently after, the fight with Shen coming in and initiating a fight. A charge to Robbins, a charge to Shen. A fight for Robbins, a fight for Shen. And his bride is here from Providence watching him play tonight yeah, in we, his first NHL game. Yeah, we saw him this morning, Doc, and uh, talked about him smiling ear to ear. And, Asked him about family coming in. He said his wife was going to make the drive down from Providence. His wife, Samantha, is here. What a story. In nine days, he will be 33 years old. Playing in his very first game in the National Hockey League here tonight. Full of compliments from Chris Cassidy, the coach down at Providence, for all the work that he's been with him over the last three years. The Caballero shot is tipped away. Cassidy kept saying, he's, you can do this. You want to be in the NHL, you can do this. Well, he has. And now he's on the sheet. <laughs> That's right, Doc. He's on the sheet. He's in the game, he's on the sheet. And he's played a lot of ice time. So along with this now, and being denied in a fairly good reach for strike, pitched around behind. Game has a physical element, doesn't it? Spooner brings it on. Watched by LeCavalier, drop back to Hamilton. Mason. In all of this, unheralded has been the work of Mason, who has had some strong saves that he's had to make. And it's 18 out of 19 for him. Rask has faced 11 off the Flyers with 8.05 to go in the second. Here is Soderberg circling around and feeding one for Lucic. Canceled by Couturier and then brought right back ahead by Reed and back in. Kevin Miller tries to play that, able to dodge by, got some help there, and it careened on back where Soderberg, who's been quite an element in this game, hands it back on to Krug. Tori Krug with a shot, and that one deflected wide. Flyers able to pick this one up and wheel it back out again, and Kelly pivots back. So Seidenberg, and McDonald. Del Zotto connects back on with Giroux. From Hearst, Ontario, he flings it wide, and it sees it bounce on to Rask, and we get a halt to play, and a tripping call is coming up. I don't know if this is Bergeron that's getting it, or Seidenberg, or Louis Erickson. Giroux, the Bruins have the matchup they want, and watch Giroux go through. Now they're going to call Louis Erickson, but Giroux went down, and to the power play for the second time in this period go to the Philadelphia Flyers, Eddie. Yeah, should have been on Patrice Bergeron. And yep. Bruins will be thankful that it wasn't because Bergeron is their man, especially come shorthanded situations winning faceoffs. Well, like it, it is kept by strike, played behind for Simmons, who was tremendous on the power play at the front of the net in the tripod position. To the back it comes now to strike, back over to Borachek, shoots one and directed by Simmons. Now it's fed by Giroux. Punched back out to the safety of center by Bergeron. One of those plays there where Giroux tries to make a whole play there. Just hold on to the puck, eat it along the boards and start over from there. McQuaid cleared, thrown by strike, chipped up high by Le Cavalier. No stick for Adam McQuaid in front of the net. Virtually a 5-1-3 here as Chara comes up with that. More than enough stick in his hands, and he's able to clear it back down. <laughs> I like what Eddie said before when he had the big back check play chart. That's not even fair. Think about the long reach and the body type of 6'9". Yeah, you see him, you got the puck, you know, oh, God, I got I got 10 feet on him, and next thing you know, just decides to reach out, and oh, there goes that opportunity. 
Miller chased off out of a cluster of flyers. It's back on for the brush back down by Paye. No shots on goal for the Flyers thus far on the power play that's got 50 left. Best chance was that opportunity for Voracek looking for Simmons. He just redirected it wide to the right-hand side of Tuka Rask. Drugged along by Miller, but shrugged down by Reed. Miller reaching, Reed taking, punch one along, but it's gathered in by Kelly, moving back out with Ryan Spooner. Kelly ahead for a shot that's blockered away, but no matter, it was an offside play going in. 27. Nice opportunity for Ryan Spooner, who through most of his junior career. Don't forget the banner goes up in Los Angeles in the second game of our. All right, Pierre will join John Porzland, who has been released from uh, the prison of the elevator in Minnesota where the two college teams are number one in the USA poll, men's and women's, the university. A drive by Coburn is blocked down in front. Rebound is spiked on now to Paye, and Paye starts it ahead. Good effort there from McQuaid. Cunningham shot is blocked wide, rebound. Cunningham right after it again, and it had to be covered up by Mason. 5.15 to go, second period, penalty box is empty again. The Bruins have the lead, 1-0. Coming up next, Wednesday Night Rivalry continues on NBCSN. The defense rivalry, the night you love to hate. Speaking of hate, you'd hate to be a shark sitting in your locker room while all the celebrating and all the loud videos of last spring are going on, wouldn't you? That's almost like the schedule makers. Vicious when you think about that matchup for the opening night. Druga shot, but blocked down. He followed through and pushed it behind Lucic to take it there. Lucic's pass is deflected to center, and Krug hustles back. San Jose with a 3-0 lead over Los Angeles last year in the first round. And went home after the seventh game. Yes, sir. It's only happened four times in the sport. And they show. Pete Jeff Carter and Mike Richards. Yes, they've done it twice. <laughs> That one tipped on a cross off of Soderberg and regathered by Le Cavalier. Cavalier pushed it on for Coburn, sized up by Soderberg. The two Flyers have started a full check in the game in the second. Matt Reed pressuring, great job by Belmar, coming in hard. Akison, who does his training in Ottawa in the offseason with Tony Greco. Lots of good stuff for the Philadelphia Flyers coming off the forecheck. Now they just have to find a way to solve that riddle that is too Rask. Craig Cunningham in to take this face off for Boston. His third NHL game. But unlike a couple of other guys playing their first tonight, he's still a young man. This is brought back on by Frazier. Outletted off the tip of the stick and back down as Paye goes after it. This strike. They cancel his strike, pushed it right back to Paye. Filtered one in front that corralled and brought back up by Ackerson and lobbed back in. It is Hamilton taking over there. Flopped one back for Paye, who gains the zone and has Cunningham moving. And the pass went between Cunningham and Frazier. Right back up comes Zach Ronaldo. Ronaldo looking for an opening there. Denied by Frazier. Punched back in by Grossman. And around it curls in the last three minutes and 45 seconds of period number two. Lobbed on. And taken now by Paye. One time Buffalo Sabre. Paye able to flop one back in. Nudged down by Bergeron and then pushed wide. Can be played on by Riley Smith onto the back. Miller gives it over. Crew fires and that one blocked by Braden Coburn. To the back it comes, and it's Smith handing it across. Marchand to the back. Could not be held by Miller, and then he's able to spirit it back in. So everybody out there moves back in quickly to four check. Coburn broke the back of the... God, it careened across. Marchand to play it there. Marchand played it back for Smith, sized up by Strike, taken along to the outside by Bergeron, and then on him is Reed. 2.40 to go.
Shots are 20 to 12 in favor of the Bruins. Riley Smith's power play goal at 10:39 of the first, the only one. Backhanded off the outside of the cage by Strike. The Swiss-born defenseman seems this one played on back that can be nudged by Marshan, but eventually kept and backhanded wide by McDonald. Drayton Shen played it behind. Boracek trying to shake McQuaid from the front of the cage, and then in the way was Chara. Peeling around to the outside with it, now Braden Shen got it to the back. Given over by Del Zotto. A shot by Grossman is blocked wide. Can be played back along again, and they hope for something to develop with Boracek. Boracek watched there by McQuaid, got it back to Grossman, floated on behind, and it's Chara lobbing one off the glass. Smashed pretty well, wasn't he? This one went across off Giroux, jabbed out again by Riley Smith. And it is time for a line change for the Bruins that are out there. Carried back on now and trying to work his way in. Well, 90 of period two. And centers one. Oh, and there was Kelly. Came back to him again. Hurries one around. Initial shot block, Doc and Eddie. So it'll be interesting to see. He's down on the ice right now, but he got hurt blocking that first shot. Carl has had that magnetism of the puck tonight, but it's always been on his stick rather than off it. But he has been strong for the Bruins in a very low scoring game. He gets right in the lane. You see him right here, this puck's going to hit him, and then he starts to labor. Stays on his feet, but you can tell he's not feeling really good coming back, hobbling back to the net. Eventually, he'll get involved in the gathering of the clans right here. Yeah, with well, Michael Roffle and Dennis Seidenberg battling right there. Roffle, wait. Play until you hear a whistle. That's what you want. A good play there from Vinny LeCavier taking that puck from behind the net, right to the net, recognizing there was a lane to get it there, forced the goaltender to make a stop. Off this tie-up, it came over to Matt Reed. Reed is shot, and that one ricocheted on across. Can be played by Del Zotto with a minute to go in the second period. In the period. Del Zotto again, and a shot went sailing wide. Can be played by Pae for the Bruins, and lugged ahead, and guided back off a of glass support. Del Zotto kicked. The battle, though, is... But it wound up being an offside play with 42 points. NBC one Russian Grand Prix on NBCSN. Then Sunday, November 2nd, F1 heads to Texas for the United States Grand Prix on NBC. Formula One is on NBC and NBCSN. In it comes now for Giroux to fire it across. Lucic settled it down and it slung wide off a leg by Bergeron and can be sealed up. So we're talking about that Formula One. And we know that there is a critical situation that has been going on. Driver Jewel Bianchi involved in an accident last week at the Japanese Grand Prix. He is in critical but stable condition at a hospital in Japan. We're sure sorry to learn of that. Chance is 6-1 Boston in this period. Odd man rushes 4-0 Bruins. Shots are 20-13 and goals 1-0. Oh, no, and the Flyers have had their chances, Doc, but the, the Bruins have done a great John two. Reach there. They try Chuka Rask got tangled up with Zidane Chara as this puck was moving from Rask's right to left. His knees. Watch the battle in front of the net. There's Chara boxing out. Yeah, right there. It ended up, I think it ended up being the stick of Tuka Rask that got caught up on the leg of Zidane O'Chara. And it just kind of lost his balance, was able to keep his eye on the puck and track it right into the glove. Going to win that battle trying to get to the front of that with Chara standing in front there. You got to make sure you're already on your way there before he is. He's going to box you right out. 
The siren signals the end of period two, and the score is the same as it was at the end of the first. The Smith goal from Soderberg and Bergeron is the only one. Liam, Mike, and Keith are coming up on the Discover Card intermission report. Mike on the weak flyers defense, and Keith on Sean Couturier's strong start. In that period, six shots for the Bruins and for the Flyers, seven. Two period totals are 20 to 14. Smith's goal, the only one. And then the punches. NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Honda, official vehicle of the National Hockey League. And by Frost Brute Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Rene Rancor had a couple of fist pumps before the game. And there were some fist pumps in the second period. <laughs> Bobby Robbins was involved in those, so a couple of Bostonians having their say that way. But we are ready to begin the third with both teams at full strength. And on the scoreboard, the Bruins with a power play goal way back in the first period. And that's the only thing thus far on the board. This one trickled through Chara, tangled up enough that Dougie Hamilton can play it back to him. Lugged on ahead, Smith a shot that's deflected up high by McDonald. Played along by Patrice Bergeron, but left behind by Jacob Voracek. But Voracek is able to play one that careened on out and down and will go for an icing. Uh, this will be one of the few times Claude Giroux doesn't have to go against Patrice Bergeron because of the icing, Eddie. True enough. A.J. Malesko, who was with us at the Olympics, women's hockey this past year in Sochi, coached, came to the game, and is watching tonight and goes into the Harvard Sports Hall of Fame Friday. Congratulations to her. Soderberg has his shot stopped by Mason. Follow up from Soderberg, onto the back now to McQuaid. Finessed one to the front, jammed out by Kelly, taken to the outside now, and Soderberg pushed it through the blue paint wide. Back up the half board. Pivoting Soderberg, brushed away by Giroux. Back defensively, and it is Braden Coburn to take it. That Soderberg can't just miss the stick of Louis Erickson, who was in all by himself. Soderberg's had a heck of a game here for yes. game one. He's yeah, been he outstanding. He may be a great pass on the lone goal of the game on the power play. So in a 1-0 game, he might be one of the three stars. It certainly would uh, pencil him in right now. <laughs> okay, just figured I should put you on the spot right off. On to the back, it comes for Lucic, who can't push it through. And so he's not in the three stars because he has not scored. Meanwhile, he's got it up again, though. Lucic sent it to the back. Kruger's shot turned aside confidently by Mason. And that one is jammed right back down, so they'll have to retreat to play. Good defensive work done by Matt Reed. Then it's Miller. In the way, though. Couturier and Reed, boy, they're great together, especially in shorthanded situations, but out there with Simmons right now. Simmons sent one to the front that Miller was able to foist away, and it's Krug sending one that goes back down and will go yet again for an icing. Seems to be a real strong chemistry with Carl Soderberg and Louis Erickson. There's Erickson all by himself. Nice little spin of spinorama type of play by Soderberg to have the recognition of that people on his backside to just throw it to the front net and hope for an opportunity. Roffel tried to push one around in front that rattled around. Number 12 is reminiscent of Simone Gagne, who is currently in residence with the Bruins on a professional trial. He skated hard this morning, and he was really excited about the potential opportunity here in Boston. He ended one of the sour chapters of the Bruins' history. That come from behind win by the Flyers when they were down three games to none and won four games to three, and he was able to pay it off. Mike Richards hit on David Krejci, changed that entire series. It was unbelievable. 
And from uh, all of our lips to God's ears, but the gods of videotape, let's say it that way. This was the tire, and this made history. The Bruins were not non plus, they won their own championship later. Ahead now comes Ronaldo, Ronaldo across. Trigger pull failed for Atkinson, is able to spin one around behind. The Sharks will go to school off of that. Perhaps they're watching now. We will all be watching all the events later on. Will be fun. Always fun to see a banner go up and the electricity at the start of the game. There's always that thought that maybe it will disadvantage the home team because they'll be celebrating and then they'll have to pull the trigger on another season. And there's no doubt, as we've mentioned, that the Sharks will be aware of what's been going on and what has been their mantle over the last five months. This one played ahead now and along to Ronaldo, wants to shake his way through. The puck got there, but it was on the stick of Bergeron and then to Chara with 3.40 gone in the third. For Bergeron, but Simmons back up the wing. Thrown to the front for Couturier by Reed and cut by Hamilton. Then Marchand. A game of missed opportunity. And not really that much allowed by the Bruins. Carried back ahead by Matt Reed. Reed denied there and a good strong reach by Charles. Thrown onto the back for a drive by Ackeson that's blocked. Came on over for a shot by Coburn that's blocked. The follow through and it's Reed. For Boracek. Boracek coming to the front. Curry one. Score! the front of the net was reaching for that it's a tie game and everybody's talking about Sean Couturier being a defensive specialist he hit back to back 96 point seasons playing for Drummondville in the Quebec Major Junior League he knows how to score we talked about the four check pressure of the Flyers there's an example of four check pressure and look at Couturier stick on the ice take it and I don't know if that eventually goes off of Soderbergh's stick before right there, that's Soderberg that puts that in, not Couturier. Eddie, watch 34 and block. A little bit of a makeshift line there for the Philadelphia Flyers. Couturier, Reed, and Voracek out there together. That quick developing play below the goal line, just fire it towards the front of the net. As all goals are reviewed determining how that puck does get to the back of the net. Clearly looks like a good goal. His beer picked up, looking like it went off. The stick of Carl Soderberg in front of the net. Take another look at that wraparound play. Watch right part of your screen, bottom part, there's Carl Soderberg. Yeah, off the stick, and then it eventually goes off. It looks like it goes off Sean Couturier at some point. The play is confirmed after video review. We have a good goal. And a 1-1 game. And I think that's where Philadelphia changed their opportunity here tonight in the second period, even here into the third, being aggressive on the four check. Couturier comes up with his team's first of the season to tie the game here early in the third. Voracek plays it ahead. See if the Flyers are picked up by this. It is turned along by Seidenberg and can be played by McQuaid and that directed back down by Kelly. Voracek and Reed get the assist on Couturier's goal. Spends much of his time in Quebec province, though born in Arizona, where his father was playing professional hockey. So, as Eddie Olchek is the leading goal scorer in the history of Illinois in the NHL, Sean Couturier is in Arizona, where the local NHL team is now called Arizona rather than Phoenix. So we have seven teams in the NHL named for states now. On to the back it comes for a little play back in that went off. Of Umberger, guided ahead now for Soderberg to nudge on back to Seidenberg and then on for McQuaper. Then it is Erickson across and Seidenberg yet again. Watch there by Cavalier, a headhunter that ducking out of the way was Soderberg. Cut by Erickson and Erickson had it swatted away in a strong defensive play there by Luke Chen. 
He was the one that gave up the puck there and had to reach in desperation mode. Back on comes like Cavalier for a drive. Oh, and that one fell Miller, but he's right back to his feet. Taken along by Tori Krug. Krug accelerates and hands on to Milan Lucic. Sized up there by Delzato and wants to go by. Lucic canceled out by Delzato, who's able to play it back ahead. Gotten there by Krug once more. Krug able to see that go off Lucic, back to Miller, and then stoked on a cross for Spooner. His shot is guided up high by Mason and Walker. Right back ahead, it comes. Nice grab at the blue line by Krug. Then Lucic with it. Shoots one that's blocked down and played back out yet again by Umberger. Umberger fed it across. Roffel gets there. And his shot is blocked by Krug. Coming across is Miller. Corey Krug nudges it on. It can be carried right back up again by Ryan Spooner and Stoke back in. On to the back it comes for Seidenberg. Seidenberg plopped it on back. It went off a stick. Nudge free where it can be guided across and guarding free hoping to get there was Ronaldo. Shouldered off and he keeps going. A save made by Rask and driving for the net hoping to get something but now slow to get up with Ackerson. Missed a wide open net on a rolling puck. Carried right back up now by Seidenberg and a blast and that one flexed away artfully by Mason. And sent back up the boards where the Bruins can control at center. Heck of a play there from Zach Ronaldo to win the physical battle in the middle of the ice. Fire it for the far pad on Tuka Rast and Atkinson with a huge opportunity. And then he paid the price there with Dennis Seidenberg. Might even a stick in the face. Save made by Mason on sort of an odd no-look play from Dougie Hamilton trying to glide free as Reed wanted to play one in front. He'll get a penalty drawn against the Bruins. Delayed call is on. Flyers trying to break the tie, and it is thrown into the paraphernalia of Marshan, and it will be Bergeron taking a minor penalty. Sean Couturier has tied this game. Now his team has a chance to go ahead for the first time. Bergeron box for a hole. Off the tie-up and the resulting flyer power play. It's McQuaid, one-handing it along. Nudge to center and Kelly can step to it there. Flop it back in and Burrow in after it, but it will be Giroux with the help of his goaltender, Mason. LeCavalier blasts it back around. Rask there to slow that. Chara reaches in, so does Voracek. Good hit by McQuaid, coming by and uh, leaving it along for Giroux was LeCavalier. Controlled in a lot of traffic by Erickson and played to the safety of Chara. And Chara makes them go back. And the bouncer is close to the cage for Mason. A change, Seidenberg comes out to work defensively with Miller. It is Cunningham working up front along with Pae for the shorthanded Bruins. A steal by Cunningham. Looks up the wing, he's got Pae alone. Left it behind, did not take it cleanly. And it's Reed tapping behind, and Pae moving in. Oh, and a good crunch there on Luke Shen. I beg your pardon on Strike. Strike able to take this back now and march ahead with it. Halfway through the power play, Mark Strike able to bang it back in and around its world near Miller. And then Braden Shen moved in and wanted to center no luck. Shen going right back again with the help of Reed, stoked it along Couturier. Couturier banged it on back to the point. Delzano walks it. Gives back across. Couturier with it there. Has Reed inside the four-man defensive box. To the back, Delzano across to McDonald. Delzano again. Shoots one that's tipped up high and against the glass by Kelly. 20 seconds left on the Bruins' kill. It came back up to Erickson, trying to fight it along in a tangle of players. It's nudged back by Reed, walked over by Delzato, handed on to McDonald. Fires and a save made by Raz. McDonald again around behind. Got the return pass from Reed. Hands on back, Delzato. Gives back over McDonald. Tried to play one across. It careened on back to center. Penalty time is up. One shot on goal on that power play for Philadelphia. And icing is called with 10.38 to go in the third of a one-all tie. Talked about the Flyers while on their power play last year, giving up 11 shorthanded goals this year in the preseason three. The Bruins could easily have a couple of quality chances. Here a giveaway by Mark Strait looking for Claude Giroux. Craig Cunningham with the pass over to Danny Paye, and what a great back check there from Matt Reed.
Uh, they don't have Gregory Campbell. Usually he and Pye are tremendous together shorthanded, but Greg Cunningham, a former Vancouver Giant, and a teammate of Milan Lucic is when they play there together. Angled along now. Group trying to take was nearly smoked out of the play by Braden Shen, and Shen is able to recover enough to play it back in, and another icing is called. We got to admire where the Bruins' depth players have really responded tonight. I think Craig Cunningham, one of them, Bobby Robbins, another one of them, playing his first NHL game, and Ryan Spooner's been solid. So a lot of good stories from the Bruins side of things. TV, or sorry, a timeout for Philly. Talked about the Flyers' defense in the pregame show, and they're missing one of their most important cogs on the back end, Timo Timonen. Had a chance to visit with Kimo during the second and third period. He's out indefinitely with a blood clot. He's a guy that brings that experience and patience and a guy that the Flyers are sorely going to miss and will be reassessed in a period of time during the season. We certainly wish him the very best dealing with the blood clot issue. We were hearing nothing at least through the end of this calendar year for him to return. Here's a shot by Bergeron. Fought off by Mason. Chipped along Bergeron again. Flung one wide. After it is Smith. After it is McDonald. He prevailed. Got it to Reed. And it's dropped back down and will go for another icing. 10.09 to go. Third period. And a one-to-one -one tie here in Boston. Face-off win, set face-off play by the Boston Bruins. Riley Smith to Patrice Bergeron, who won that face-off. Bergeron, I don't think he realized how much time he had. And a quick shot and a good save from Steve Mason. Couldn't change again because of the icing. Good job by Katuri winning that face-off. Braden Shen sent it back in, and the fire wagon changed by the Flyers. Giroux's line is out there. Belmar is working on this unit right now and got a piece of that one that's deflected back in. Out to get it as Mason hurried it around off Luke Shen. Pumped on second effort and across. It's given away and a shot by Bergeron. Got the glass wide of the cage. Taken away by Marchand. Fed away from Riley Smith. And back up can come the Flyers. Fighting through is Voracek. Puck topped on. And ahead now comes Smith and on a breakaway. Getting a piece of it, Mason. Bed in front off Belmar, gathered in by Hamilton. Hamilton spins, but the pass cut by Belmar and sent back across. Moving on in, Giroux, and a save is made by Raz. Couldn't follow through because of the long reach from Zidane Chara on the Giroux chance. It is Grossman at center. In a game that seemed to have little chances, there have been some strong ones lately. Errors helped that along. Ahead now comes Spooner. Spooner fed one along, trying to force his way was Fraser, but denied by Mason. Back the other way they come now, and Roffel's pass is secured by Seidenberg and banged right back in toward him again. He takes the toss from Rats. Former Philadelphia Phantom won a championship there in 2005. And it's sent back to him again. His defense partner in that championship year was Yoni Pitkin. Carried right back on and fed through some traffic. Given on by Miller into some traffic and Seidenberg will turn again. Waits around behind. Owner of one of those Boston Bruins championship rings. Dennis Seidenberg leaves it there for one who wants one badly in Miller. Played right back ahead and it ricocheted across to Erickson but he couldn't collar it. Sped back just away from Wayne Simmons, who caught up to it. Nudged off by Kelly, who took it right away. In a good defensive play yet again by Kelly. That one ricocheted off a glove to center. Soderberg fired it off the corner boards, and in goes Erickson, and he swept one that was wide. Seven and three-quarter minutes to go, third period. Soderberg tried to spin one along, but it's denied quickly there. And can be played across, but again turning with it is Kelly. Kelly gliding around behind. What will he do? Erickson at the front. Drive by Krug is deflected wide. The dive failed from McQuay. Knifed across off of McDonald. Pushed further and it is thrown in by Krug. Crazy bouncing puck all around. 
someone call time. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. Ahead now, Erickson across off Kelly, and then Krug. And Krug shot slow. Soderberg back over for shot by Erickson. That's tip high. Well, those two guys got great chemistry there. Soderberg and Erickson, they work so well together. And then you got Chris Kelly out there. to be able to open up some space, do a lot of the dirty work. And I really like what I'm seeing from Soderberg and Erickson together in the offensive zone. 6.45 to go. The lines have changed. Fresh troops are out there. What will happen in this? Seidenberg goes back to play it. As Hamilton and Gibbs to him, the return to Seidenberg. He marches on ahead for the Bruins to that red line and floats it back in. Hustling to it, Cunningham jostled out of the way by Del Zotto. More battling behind. Getting up, trying to play now is Robbins. Up the boards, hoping for Cunningham. Nudged it onto the back. Seidenberg is shot, and it's kicked aside off Paye. Robbins able to play this one. Drives it the other way. Drive, and that deflected wide, and a penalty coming up against Philadelphia. They touch. The call will be made with 6 one to go. to the box. Kerser on to try to win the draw. Couturier against him. Erickson gave it on to the back. Led across now for Hamilton and then played further for Erickson. Hamilton wanted to pull the trigger, could not. Got it back over to Smith. Back to Hamilton. Then Erickson. Fires! Save! Scramble in front. Shuffled away. Good work by the goal stick held by Mason and the Bruins must retreat. And a nice effort by Nicholas Grossman to clear that puck for the Flyers. There's power play unit with Erickson and Soderberg and Bergeron up front. Smith dropped it. Pitched back on by Soderberg. Erickson couldn't get it, but Bergeron could. Circles and hands over. Erickson with the help of Smith stoked it back, but in the way Coburn, and he clears. Having to make a play, Rask, a couple of head fakes, is drifting by and coming to the bench now as Umberger. Matt Reed is out there to work with Couturier for the shorthanded Flyers. McDonald and Luke Shen, the defense, Mason to play it. Sent one off one Bruin, off another, and eventually it's played on and a nice job by Reed to get it back down. One shot on goal on the power play by Boston. 50 to go. 450 left in regulation. Torrey Krug able to march ahead with it for the Bruins, able to fire it back around. Corralling it there was Lucic. Tried to control, knifed away from him by McDonald, twisted back by Spooner, brought on now for a shot that is sent right back out by Mason on the try that came from Hamilton. Stopped there by Rask and nudged back on for the carry back out by Krug. Krug able to bang it right back in off a of glass support, taken over by Coburn, and Coburn able to finesse it by, and it's able to be whipped right back down the ice by the Flyers, who have a dozen left on the kill. Two power play shots for the Bruins on this power play that's got seven seconds to go. Rushing ahead, Seidenberg got it over on the wing to Marshan. Taken out of the play by Coburn. Battled for there by Umberger. Still they jam at it. Kicked along by Bergeron. Sent back by Smith. Gotten there by Seidenberg and a shot right on goal and stopped there by Mason. Brought right back ahead by Ronaldo right out of the box and he's a target. This brushed right in on Rask who decides he'll cover. 3.43 to go, third period of play in Boston. Both teams would won. Welcome back to Boston on opening night. Watch 18 in black, that's Riley Smith. He sneaks in behind the Philadelphia Flyer defense. He's the only goal scorer for the Bruins. Steve Mason shuts the door. That would have put the Bruins ahead 2-1. They're talking about sneaking in behind the defense. Here comes Claude Drew, but watch the right part of your screen. Here comes the Dano Chara. Just gets that stick out to prevent Claude Giroux from really following through there. You see Giroux drop the bottom hand off the stick there. No question, some contact from the stick of Chara to the hand of Claude Giroux. Adam McQuaid tapped that one ahead. It is rolled right back near him, but corralled by Chara trying to get through Giroux. Second effort, Giroux able to filter it ahead, got it on to Braden Shen, then off the stick of Bergeron. Bergeron behind, cross-bodied by Braden Shen. Good hit there. Up the boards, it's Riley Smith spinning one on the back and down and wide for an icing. 
Up next, Wednesday night rivalry continues on NBCSN. The Kings and the Sharks. Wednesday night rivalry, the night you love to hate. Stay with us for all of the activity going on in Los Angeles. And that uh, depends on the outcome and how long it takes here. But we will have all of that information for you, so if you want to watch that, you can. Meanwhile, here, it is sent on to the back and can be thrown back on further for control of Umberger. Umberger one hands it along. Umberger watched there by Chara, put it off the outside of the cage. Jammed right back again and on out to the center ice area for McDonald to give on over to Coburn. Led one too far for LeCavalier. Punched right back, LeCavalier tried to feed one off of a McQuay who nudges it back in. Where it can be held by Rask. Well, an errant pass by the Flyers. The Dano Char with the reach. Kept alive, McCovey tries to get to the front of the net to Michael Raffle, and as you mentioned, Doc McQuaid just shovels it back to his goaltender. Yeah, that's just good communication, you know, by the Flyers, aggressive on the forecheck, and really putting a lot of duress on the Bruins defense. One thing for the players to pay attention to, rolling pucks. They're bouncing around a lot. A right, set face-off play there with Giroux going hard to the net, looking for Braden Shen for the weak side. Seeing that, it's sure worth trying again if you get the chance, isn't it? Along to the outside now, a pass is tipped back down and will go right in close to the goal where Mason will watch as it's ushered around by Del Zotto. So Luke Shen holding now with two and a quarter minutes separating these two teams from overtime if neither team scores in the interim. Thrown on across for a little pass that is tipped away, but then Braden Shen had it taken away and carried back out by Chris Kelly. Kelly moving in with Erickson. He's also got Soderberg. Erickson able to play that to Soderberg. And then to the back it comes for a drive by McQuaid. Talked a lot about Carl Soderberg and Louis Erickson. Watch the support here. Great support. Chris Kelly goes hard to the net. This puck is fluttering towards Steve Mason, and Chris Kelly's able to put it in to the wide open net. And it's fluttering because of an equipment malfunction for Adam McQuaid. The stick explodes in his hands. It breaks in two. A great battle down low. Louis Erickson jumps on it because Chris Kelly does a great job, as Eddie said. But that puck was fluttering because McQuaid's stick exploded in his hands. Oh, you want to score? Go to the front of the net. Great things are going to happen, and that's exactly where Kelly went. But the interchange, the support in the corner by Erickson and Soderberg made that whole play happen. Cunningham and Paye and Lucic are out for the Bruins right now. The Flyers want to get their goaltender off shortly. 90 to go in regulation. Coburn hands it on back, straight with a pass free, cut off by Seidenberg, and played back ahead. Trying to pull free was Paye. It sent back over for Reed. Reed able to roll it back in for uh, Simmons, but instead it's Seidenberg there. The net is empty at the other end. They go with the extra attacker. It is kept alive by Del Zotto. Fired back around and taken by Seidenberg. Scaled it off to the glass. It is protected, jammed at by Bergeron. Fed into Seidenberg. Tried to spin it away. Paye there. Then Lucic, but cut off by Simmons. Simmons able to stoke one around behind. Perrine's freely up the boards for Del Zotto. Played one on for Giroux, and that one was blocked in front and then cleared away. 42 to go. Taking it as Matt Reed. Got it to the back. Del Zotto a shot. Stifled there by Bergeron. Gotten by Lucic. Controls. Fed it across. And the shot is cut off by Del Zotto from the stick of Bergeron. Led back ahead, and they're able to scale it in off Giroux. Played there by Smith. Lobbed into traffic, but held by McDonald. Dumped around behind. They hope for Braden Shen. They got Chara. Whacked at by Voracek. Voracek tried to nudge it on, but it came across. Unable to play it out. Bergeron, second effort. It trickles to center. With 10 to go. They have to hurry to get back across. Blasted back along by Giroux off the stick of McDonald. Three seconds and two to go. And the Bruins are going to win it.
The Flyers got 20 shots on the Bruin goal. Another 15 were blocked in front by Boston and some at the feverish finish. You have been watching Wednesday Night Rivalry presented by Coors Light. A one goal game and a late goal by Chris Kelly. Two to one Boston. For Eddie and Pierre, Mike Emmerich saying so long for Boston. After these messages, it's out to Los Angeles for game two of our doubleheader. Good night all.